In our previous video, we were trying to help Bobby J set some goals. And we went and we drew the problem, we filled in some blanks, and now we're going to start and we're going to create a system of equations because we have a lot of unknowns. We don't know T2, we don't know T3, we don't know X2, we don't know X3, and there are a lot of things going on. So, firstly, I know X2. I know the distance traveled in this bit right here. Now, it's not going to be distance is equal to speed times time. Why? Because I have an acceleration here, and we understand what do we use when we have motion that undergoes uniform acceleration. So we can write that x2 is equal to its initial velocity, which is right here. This is the beginning of the journey. So we can write v1, okay? The time the journey took, which is t2, plus one half the acceleration of the journey. The acceleration is just 0 0.2 times the time again, t2, all squared, okay? And now if I look at x3, since I know that the velocity here is constant, i.e. the acceleration is zero, I know that x3, x3 is just that v2 times t3. Now, this still doesn't help me much because I still have a lot of unknowns. However, I know some things. I know some relationships. They said that after 27 minutes, there are still 1,100 meters to go. So we know some things definitely. We know that this complete distance right here must be 1,100 because he's already run the 8,900. So this distance right here from this point to this point must be 1,100. So this part right here and this part right here, right there must add up to 1,100. So x2 plus x3 must add up to 1,100 meters. Also, this time here and this time here, they said after 27 minutes, meaning that there is 30 minus 27 minutes left, which is three minutes. So T2 plus T3 should add up to 180 seconds or three minutes. Okay, so let's go and let's see if we can simplify things a bit. So we can substitute for X2, okay? So because I'll call this one, I'll call this two, because of this right here, we know that X2 is equal to 1100 minus X3. So if I plug that in over here, I have 1100 minus X3 again is equal to, I'm going to substitute these values in 5.49 T2 plus 0.1 T2 all squared. And again, this is good because I have an equation now with T2 on one side. However, I still have this pesky X3 right here, and that's another unknown that I don't know. However, I do know that X3 is equal to V2 times T3. And I know V2. I can write V2 in terms of T2. So if I go ahead and I finish this, I should have 5.49 plus 0.2 T2 times T3. And again, I have a T3. However, there's something that I can do. Because this says one implies this. So now I have two implies that T3 is equal to 180 minus T2. And the only thing I'm doing here is I'm using the relationships that I know. I'm using relationships that were given to find unknowns and I'm getting rid of variables that I don't know and I'm writing them in terms of other things. So I started here and this is what I wanted to find. My objective was to find T2. So I'm trying to get an, equa an equation explicitly in terms of T2. That's the only variable that I want inside that equation. 
and here I have X3. This I don't know X3. I know V2. However, V2 is written in terms of T2, which is good. And I don't know T3. However, T3 can also be written in terms of T2. And as I go through this entire process, you'll see that all I'm doing is I'm writing everything that I can in terms of T2. I'm trying to get rid. I'm trying to get rid of as many unknowns as I possibly can. And why am I going on this route? And this deals less with the physical side, with the physics side of it, and more with the mathematical side of it. Because here we have a problem that we've analyzed. Now, this is where our math skills come in, okay? So, this is what I have, and I know this as well. So I can rub this out, and I have 180 minus T2. So I have 1100 minus 5.49 plus 0 0.2 T2 180 minus T2 is equal to 5.49 T2 plus 0 0.1 T2 all squared okay now things are really really starting to look up for me now because I have an equation now explicitly in terms of t2 and if I look at the nature of my variables I have a linear variable here and I have a quadratic variable here but right now I have these two products here and when I multiply them I know I'm going to end up with a quadratic variable so can I expand this? Can I simplify this? Let's see what happens. So I have 1100 and I'm going to distribute now. So I have my first term 5.49 and I'm going to distribute this negative. Negative 5.49 times 180 and I'm actually going to calculate that right now. This is 988.89. Now, am I doing the right thing? I'll just go up here and I'll check again. V1, which is V0, this is the initial velocity, 5.49, and this is 180, and I multiply these two together, so I believe that my, uh, my algebra is correct. So, and I have 5.49, negative 5.49 times negative T2. I'm distributing this negative here. I could have left this negative out front and dealt with it later, but actually, I'll do that. Just so there's no confusion, okay? So that's 180 minus 5.49 T2. Now I'm moving here, 0 0.2 T2. So 0 0.2 T2 times 180 plus, because both of those are positive. So 180 times 0 0.2 is just 36. So this becomes 36 T2, 0 0.2 T2 times negative T2 minus 0 0.2 T2 squared. So I have a quadratic term here. I actually think, can I fit this on this side? Okay, I'm gonna write this extra small. 5.49 T2 plus 0 0.1 T2 squared. And again, this is really looking up for me because if I look right here, 